Hey, and welcome to the video. I'm going to be talking about messy accounts today and how I approach them, how I transition them to an organized structure, and how doing that unlocks me to better understand and improve my account performance. By following along in the video today, I can promise you're going to learn how to transition messy campaigns into a more organized way of thinking and structuring your account. Specifically, you're gonna learn how to one, organize data from that campaign, two, pull out what is working versus not, three, use that information to then create a clean, effective, and importantly, extremely satisfying account structure. So let's get into it. So I'm here in my Google Ads testing environment, and your account has probably looked or looks something like this. Maybe you just have that one messy campaign delivering performance, but it's completely confusing and it has way too many things going on and you just want to understand it better. Maybe it's not performing so well, but you're not sure what in it is working and what in it you have to get rid of. Or maybe you've watched one of my videos on Skaggs and Quality Score and you want to give that a try. Either way, I'm going to do a live demo today using an example data set replicating what I see and what I help students and clients do all of the time in their own ad accounts. So let's dive in. We have a messy campaign about office chairs and we have the classic ad group one. This is the default naming and please give your campaigns and ad groups clear naming conventions. It's so much easier to understand for you and anyone that accesses your account, like me or like someone else that you bring in that's managing it on a monthly, weekly, daily basis. So as we click in and we look at the keywords, this is the number thing that I number one thing that I run into when I'm diving into a new account. People stuff all of the keywords into one hero ad group. So I'm not gonna lie, there are some legends out there that can make this work where their ads and landing pages are so insanely good, they can bundle everything into one ad group, but they are the exception. And most of the time when I see this, it is people that are at a low amount of spend and they are making things way too complex for themselves. So if that sounds like you, make sure you keep paying attention to this video. I'm here to help you step-by-step. Step. So let's first pull the data into Google Sheets with the export button to make things easier to understand. So I'm gonna press download and then I'm going to go and I'm going to press Google Sheets. And I'll give this whatever name and download and we'll cut right to that. I try to give as much information as I can in the highest possible quality for free, but everybody's context is different. Sometimes you need an extra hand, a second pair of eyes, or just a closer look on some very difficult business problems. Well, I'm happy to say that I do offer coaching and several of you folks have already reached out, which is amazing. I'm very happy to say that all of the students I'm working with are seeing improved results and understanding of how to replicate those results without me helping things along over Zoom. I offer two plan types, one month of coaching and one that is a quarter of coaching at a discounted rate. I'm here to help you with whatever specific niche or problem you're dealing with. Many viewers know that I have eight figures in spend on Google ads and over 10 years of experience. And while spend is never the hundred percent factor, it does speak to my experience in the last 10 years of working on Google ads accounts. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, check out the link below or send me an email. Both are in the description. And with that, let's get back to the video. Alrighty, so I've got my data here organized in Google Sheets and I've applied some fake data here that I thought was fairly representative of what I usually see when I'm looking at people's accounts. There's a mix of return on investment, there's a mix of CTRs, there's a mix of how much impression volume keywords are getting. Basically, there's all different types of data everywhere. And that way we can also do an important step, which is eliminating obvious losers. So ideally you're tracking some sort of conversion value or return on ad spend. And to be honest, if you aren't tracking this, please pause the video right now and go set that up. It's extremely important. But now that we have this data, I'm going to filter it by lowest return on ad spend, as you can see in column L. And then I'm going to mark all of those rows in red. That leaves us with a target list of keywords that we are interested in improving. Essentially here, I 
would assume that anything below a 2x return on investment isn't going to be very effective and we're going to filter those right out. And now I'm going to plop that keyword list into a tool I use all of the time called Keyword Toaster. So if we look at Keyword Toaster, this is a no frills tool that is really great at saving you some time. And basically what this does is it can take a bunch of different keyword terms and then you can use this to toggle whether you want broad match, phrase match, and exact match, rest in peace, broad modified. And it will give you a list of all of those formatted perfectly for you to then plop them into Google Ads itself. So now as we go back to the target list, I have now organized this into ad group names. I've organized this based on their match type, I've given them names, and we've also put two columns here with commas, which this is a little bit of a funny looking, but important step to make sure that you can then copy and paste these keywords quickly. This might seem like a lot, but in reality, once you get quick at this, it'll take just minutes and it'll save you a lot of headaches and time. If you really get into Skags, I highly recommend learning the basics of Google Ads Editor to actually do more bulk changes, but this will just take a moment for you, but I'm going to now go and build these ad groups in the account. All right, so now we're back in the ad account. Let's start building step by step. So I'm going to be toggling between the ad account and Google Sheets, but let's first create our new ad group. Okay, so now we're going to use that data that we organized in Sheets, and we're just going to tab between here, and let's start on row two, Eames office chair, pop back, throw that name in there, and then we're going to use these commas, which is very helpful, to put in all three of our different match types. And this looks a little bit weird, right? But when I save and continue this, they'll get parsed as three different keywords. So then we're going to save and continue, and it's pre-filled information about this ad, but your ad would look a lot better than this. And we'll just continue through here because this isn't about making ads, this is about making a better account structure. And we'll save and continue. And voila, so we've just made our new ad group and it's taken me exactly a minute and that's talking through it. You clicking through will take probably 30 seconds or less. So let's try it again. So new ad group, go to our sheet, grab our, grab our name here, paste it there. We grab these, put them in there, save, continue, customize our ad later, save, continue, and we've got our ad group. And so now what is this going to do for us? Well, instead of having our ad group one and it's everything, everything in the kitchen sink. I also call this a Frankenstein ad group or a Frankenstein campaign. What we're going to do is we're going to be able to split out everything into really, really finely delineated and organized chunks of the campaign that we can immediately look into and say, okay, how am I performing in the ergonomic office chair niche, right? What people are looking for that? And then I can then look, if you imagine if there's data here, I can say, oh, I'm performing really well for exact match ergonomic office chair searchers, but I'm not performing really well for phrase match or I'm performing well for phrase match, but I'm not performing well for broad match. So then you can go and you can turn off broad match, but you can keep these two running. And it's just so much faster, it's so much easier, but there's also ad benefits directly to this. So if I actually go into my ads and assets and we imagine that this is an ad about an ergonomic office chair, I can really well intent match and set up a perfect journey for someone. If they're searching for an ergonomic office chair, they then see the ad that's about an ergonomic office chair. I can put them also on a landing page that's about an ergonomic office chair. That just has a high degree of congruence and it's much easier for you to deliver a really good experience for people. And that's actually going to then directly be reflected in your quality score. And you can, you can then you know set up all your custom column views 
by just clicking through here, making a column set called quality score, you save and apply that, throw that on the filter, and you'll be able to really quickly understand when you apply a strategy like this, why it is so easy and it's so effective. So I really recommend it, especially if you're newer to Google Ads and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. And so it would be the same for the Eames office chair as well. You could see, you know, based on the Eames office chair or whatever your keyword is that you've split out, how you're doing at the broadest level, how you're doing at the most exact level. And you can really easy, easily just toggle. Well, you know, in some cases, it's really good to have a broad match keyword. Broad match isn't bad. It's just something that you need to be really aware about and really thinking about. And it's only good for some terms. And it can be bad for some terms as well. So maybe in for the Eames office chair, maybe exact and phrase match was too expensive, but broad match was giving me a good return on investment. It'd be really hard for me to understand that if I was looking at the ad group one level, if that makes sense. There's just too much going on here. Imagine if these were just a bunch of different phrase types, you know, uh, match types rather. You just ha would have phrase match, broad match, exact match, everything going on in one ad group, a bunch of different keyword types. You would just have to have a higher level of understanding of Google Ads knowledge to even parse through the data. But even outside of that, how could you give someone a, a more customized experience? Well, you could set the final URL, but even then you would have to rely on your responsive search ad, giving them a really customized experience. Well, you might say, oh, you could use dynamic keyword insertion to do that and location insertion. Well, dynamic keyword insertion is not perfect either. You could end up, you know, what if they search for something that was kind of related, but when it got dynamically insert, uh, inserted into your ad, it ended up being terrible or it ended up being, you know, something kind of like heinous or just really didn't make sense. Well, that can totally happen, right? So if you want to have the highest degree of control over your campaigns and you want to have the highest degree of insight into how things are performing at the campaign level, the ad group level, the ad level, the keyword level, there's no easier and no better way to do it than what I just walked through. Okay, so now that you're at this step, or maybe you have five, 10, 20, 30 different SCAGs that you've built out, or maybe you've organized them in STAGs. This works for STAGs too, just so we're clear single theme ad groups or single interest ad groups, SIAGs, whatever you're doing to structure the campaign, um, there's probably a few things you're wondering, such as, Alex, how do I customize all of my ads? Alex, you know, my situation is going to create 200 SCAGs. How do I do that quickly? Um, you know, I've got a bunch of different landing pages. How do I, you know, properly delineate those, right? So let's go through those one, uh, one by one, but we're not going to be able to fully demo everything just in this video. I'm going to have to follow up with a couple of more. So if you're interested in knowing, Hey, how do I create 200 skags quickly? Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in, Hey, how do I customize my ads for building a bunch of different skags? Let me know in the comments, right? Just let me know and I'll, I'll make the video, right? So, but let's talk about it at a high level. So let's talk about ads first. So you're looking at your ad, you know, I think the easiest way to lazily customize your ad is to create one hero ad that you know performs well generally, has really good messaging um, in your responsive search ad, and then to layer on dynamic keyword insertion. Um, this will give you a level of relevance, um, but it's not going to be good as good as if you customize the actual copy to match the search intent better. Dynamic keyword insertion is kind of a drug. Um, it has side effects, but it feels good to use because it saves you time. But it can get you there in the short term. But just keep in mind, it's going to give you some results that are not necessarily what you're looking for because someone's going to search some random long tail keyword and it's going to be inserted into your ad and it's going to look terrible. It's not going to make sense. Even if someone clicks it, they're not going to be put on that journey. That's really good. So just keep that in mind. 
Now let's talk about how you could deal with the landing page issue. Okay, so if you're doing SCAGs, pretty easy. Ideally, you would have a landing page, you know, for ergonomic office chair, like in this case, or you would have, you know, a landing page that matches the, the search precisely, and then you could just customize the final URL here. And then when someone searches for this, they're gonna go here. But when someone searches in this, they're gonna go, they're gonna go here, right? And maybe, maybe, right, maybe you're using something like AMP or maybe you have a mobile site and you can customize it like this. Cool, good, great. So, and then the last thing is about the SCAGs. So, you know, how do you make a bunch of different SCAGs? Well, I personally don't think it's too hard to go like this, but it's not maybe reasonable if you have a hundred different ad groups and you've got a half an hour. Um, so the, the short answer is you can either use a tool like 10 scores. There's a couple of other tools that are out there that can give you a quick template. Um, or you can use um, Sheets or Excel to um, actually import the campaigns into Google Ads. And that's a bit more complicated, but I think it's really good and it's, it's an effective thing to learn if you're really scaling up. And in that, um, I will be following up if there's enough interest. Like people really wanna know how to make 200 skags because they just are super into skags because they've watched my other videos. I love skags, I use them pretty much in every account ever. Uh, and I think they're great, but um, it's up to you guys. So if you want it, I will make it. Other than that, uh, I hope this video was useful. I hope that you're able to take your scary ad group ones and turn them into something that's really clean, satisfying, and effective for your business. Um, let me know if you need the, the sheet that I was using, the te little test sheet. Um, I can publish that and, and put it in the description as well. Um, but I hope you uh, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.